But I want to say good evening to the distinguished gentlemen on the platform. I'm a real boss woman. Yeah. One little red woman among them big yeah. men there. But all of them are brainy, decent Barbadians who have made their mark in this society and can be emulated by the youth out there who have no leaders that they can follow in that Democratic Labour Party. The people of St. Thomas say, hello, they love you. And they too are in the vanguard to make sure that we get a government that cares about the people of Barbados and the people of the Caribbean. Indeed, the people of the world. And so this evening, we have come to talk with you. We have come to share with you experiences and I'm not so much into talking too much about the Dems, although you can't help but talk about them. Because I've been to eight funerals last week alone. And as soon as I stepped into the door, people who only know me by my red face, or my little natty hair, can call it that. Mistress, come back here. When we gonna get rid of these vagabonds? Mistress, I suffer with real, real bad. I am a little old lady here with a walking stick, be jinxed in the tech wear one of my pensions, and telling me nonsense about 1975. I know individuals whose pension they were receiving too for more than a decade. Merkin, you have to get your money back sometime soon. But you have to be in this vanguard with us. So come just here and sit down and talk. Because you know what? The people in St. Philip got up last week and hollered for murder on the road, get paid for ready. And the people in St. Thomas and St. Lucy and St. James and these constituencies have their lips buttoned down. They expect the MP to go their whole licks for them, but they're not mobilizing. We have to come together and let Frondestro and the Democratic Labour Party know enough is enough. I shall be in Nose's face. No, don't worry. I call him Noses now. And I saw him on the television night like, before and it hurt me because he looked like he aged like Mandela when he was talking to those people. I could not believe that that was the front desk I knew. In less than five days, gray hair all over, face tired. But you know what? If he did not take those people to Sherburn Center, he couldn't sit there in a room with them the whole way sitting now. They had to pass through the scanners. Otherwise, he would not have been able to say a single word to them because they are the poorest of the poor that the Democratic Labour Party went out there and they fooled them. But that was their democratic right to vote how they did. And now those poor people that I heard Chris Sinclair say, say, can you imagine the opposition and others are quarreling with us because we took people off welfare and put the 3,000 people to work and now they are criticizing that. But if you took them out of welfare, put them to work, be jinxed the back of welfare now, and you cut the welfare budget from Chris. Christopher Sinclair name here, the name Sink. He has sunk Barbados in three years to rock bottom. Sinclair. Well, you know about the Sinclair and other boys that you see too last week. Sinclair. He has sunken Barbados to a level that even Montserrat was seen as the worst because of, you know, the conditions with the environmental problems. All the rest in the Caribbean, even Haiti, performing better than Barbados because Sinclair is sinking and he has sunken the economy of Barbados. But there's hope for you, the people of Barbados. These people here are not political on the platform, you know. These two distinguished gentlemen who have joined us, but they are hurting too. Call to raise them like up. Manufacturing going through the window. Agriculture ain't saying a pine called Thompson. May he rest in peace. Send back all the Guyanese that were helping us to get agriculture on a good footing. International business, well, if there's no confidence, how do you expect people, people to come and put in millions of dollars into your economy when there's no guarantee that they can get any benefits from what they have invested in? Oh, my Lord, have mercy on Barbados under the Dems. But let me
let me get to my script. Because under the astral leader of none other than the right honorable Owen Seymour Arthur, 14 years of great governance, Barbados was seen internationally as a mecca of the Caribbean. We were on the stepping stones, like if we were there on that step, to become a developed country. All those aspects and sectors of the society firing on the cylinders. And people coming from Trinidad here to shop. And they're just going to Puerto Rico at different places on a little cruise and enjoying themselves because they are hard working people who whenever got the opportunity, they will go out and do what they had to do. And now these wicked sons of guns that came to you in 2008 and said, good governance, equity and fairness, transparency, huh? stability, that's a real good word, stability, stability, accountability, the stability ain't even as good as White Hills and Andrew that falling apart. They have put a kind of tornado in this economy that has blown everything to bits. And you, the ordinary people of Barbados, you, the middle class people of Barbados, are suffering minute by minute. And when I travel and I see almost on every road in Barbados and even in regular rural communities for sale, for sale, for sale on people's property, some for more than two years, because nobody can buy. Nobody can buy, so the for sale sign is up. But I thank Owen Asser, and I thank him even more for his politics of inclusion, because the Labour Party never practiced tribalism politics yet. And that Democratic Labour Party stepped in there one, and they decapitated the heads of every institution in this country. Rural Development Commission, Peter Scott sent home as director. Urban Development Commission, Mr. Edgel gone home. Then they went to NCC to get rid of Stanton Ali. And then they went at the lowest levels with people that were general workers and so, and tore them apart because of a fatty calf and families first. And tonight, because of fatty calf and families first, we have neighbors who are waiting and asking to lend them an onion. We know they want the onion because they can't give it back. They want a pinch of salt again. You don't live where you live, you live up there in the vault road. And it's called the vault road, but the people who live in it are not dead. And I know neighbors who are now suffering in a way that they never did in 20 and 25 years because this government has chosen to drive them in the ground with the draconian measures that the Labour Party, the Democratic Labour Party, excuse me, came with. You know what? When we heard on new houses, new homeowners, that we will be moved to the tune of $400,000 before Thompson passed, he brought something for $150,000. I don't even think anybody ever get back in here. Because if the small business people can't get back their money for the services, and they cannot get back their VAT all like now from the government, and they cannot pay their workers, the NIS, or paying any VAT, I don't know how those people who are first time homeowners could have gotten. And then the police, some of them, not all, we have a good fleet of police officers, I must tell you. But some of them were duped. Duty free cars for you. Duty free cars for teachers. I want this government to tell me if the rumors I am hearing are true. Is it true that some people in unions got duty free cars? In this Barbados, they're not police or teachers. I want to know. I do not know, and I'm not going to pass. I'm pass any aspersions on anybody's name? Is it true that only two weeks ago, a businessman went to the port and got 14 cars out without paying a cent in duty? If that is true, I want them to go home, whoever the person is that gave the authorization. 
Is it true that that person was able to ask for permits for 10 of those vehicles? I was told, no, we have passed the court already. I want a phone call and the person got those 10 permits. Not in my Barbados. That our parents and our four parents stood up for justice. They stood up for equity. They stood up for treating the fellow man as though he were their brother or sister or neighbor. And all of a sudden, we are having some people in this country that have become leaders who seem to think that they have arrived and their chests are puffed up in the air, not only with ignorance, but with the food and the nonsense that they eat in their night. Big chest people, but they're not interested in listening to anything anybody has to say. We, the Labour Party, offered our assistance more than once. And we told them that is going to be a failure. And the them say, no, 14 years and nothing to show. Y'all put my business in the morass. So I wonder what the hell they will call this now. Because what they got to in now in morass? It might go on the last word at the end. But I don't know what you call it. I don't curse. I don't curse. But they keep saying the morass, the morass, the morass. Especially Donville. You watch him though here. You watch Donville. He's the major one talking about morass. I want also, ladies and gentlemen, comrades all, to remind you a little more. Because David Thompson, now the deceased, brought a budget in 2008 after telling you a hundred houses in a hundred days. And all these different pie in the sky things he threw at us and educated people and many young people and some old ones, all of them me too, swallowed it. Called licorishness is a curse for some people. It is a curse. And you see that thing that is called monetary gains? If you don't work honestly for it, a fool and his money are soon parted. And that is the problem with some of us, we're too hand to mouth. But we were not taught that way. We were taught to work for what we have and be a resilient people. And once we do that, whatever is due to us, we will get. And that man came in and in the first budget when he raised that 200 million dollars off the backs of all Barbadians, the only thing I think didn't come to fruition was the telephone tax. Even the bicycles you had to pay for. Road tax went up. Tell some people now driving all over Barbados cannot pay road tax. Pray to God that none of them don't hit you. They ain't even paying the insurance for the vehicle because the insurance is so high. Water bills, I can remember him, boy. He was my friend, you know. Don't forget Thompson was my friend. We are told by the consultants, take care of the water bills by a hundred percent. But ladies and gentlemen, I will get back to you. 60% be jinxed all like last night, not to drop of water in any way in St. Thomas. That if a fire broke out, every one of our houses would be burnt. And it has been going on for a week now again. Not a soul in water, sorry, but we pay our bills. There are business houses that owe millions of daughters, dollars to water authority. And they have not paid a cent. But as a little old lady, the little old man, the disabled woman, the single mother, owes $25, some unmanly, uncouth person in front of the door. I can't blow like off the pipe and all the neighbors looking out. But the 200 thousands and the two million dollars that people owe, not a saint, not a red saint. But you all know, and I don't know if this is true, but I need to have it corrected by John Voice, that the hospital water was cut off three weeks ago. And they had to, even that was not paid. This government that is so efficient, that is accountable, that has good governance, that has transparency. I went to look for my friend who is a strong Labour Party woman. And I saw when the private ambulance came, a woman who was there from about 10 o'clock this Saturday night. And by 12.30, the Sunday, a private ambulance was in there where you pull in for the any, Put her in it and bring her down to a private firm for a CAT scan, the damn CAT scan machine that created and working. And by the time they, she came back, 
the ambulance waiting for another patient to bring down be jinxed by the time the QVH is finished. That company can buy two CAT scan machines and QVH still won't have one. Come and tell us the truth, your voice, because you will not tell us the truth about the highway to where. You will not tell us the truth about the transport board. You will not tell us the truth we expect you to tell us. As an honest man, I thought you were. Show me the honesty. This government took up all the electricity bills, cash carry up the gas, the energy bills. Took away that subsidy that Owen Arthur gave us that helped us to be able to eke out. Carried up the liquor licenses for the shops from $350 to $1,000. Carried up the professional fees, the doctor, the lawyer, the pediatrician, even the funeral director. And if they don't pay by the end of January, the $2,500 is doubled to $5,000. That is the government that said, pathways to progress. And now today, in 2014, January, when we should have been celebrating the birth of Christ and the Epiphany, we think we are in a pocketary again, with all kind of hell break loose in this place, and people getting sent home left, right, and center, because they're in a family to some of the same people that are giving the instructions. I have constituents, three or four of them out of ten from the Ministry of Education. One of them has been close to seven years. And when you look in the ministry, there's some that came in that is family to somebody, two years, and they're still working. My constituent home said, I'm the only breadwinner. I have another one whose mother was fired last year. No employment, she is the only breadwinner now. You know what? When she heard you will not be reassigned after the 31st of December, she said, Lord have mercy, I was the only breadwinner. My mother lost she work. I got paid the rent. I got buy the food. I got paid the utility bills. Lord, I feel like I will commit suicide. That is what those love. I nearly called them. Up. Those dear loving people, DLP, the dear loving people, have done to the psyche of Barbadians in this society that our four parents toiled in the sun, in the rain, in the heat. To be able to build this country, these fields and hills beyond recall that we say are our own. And now we do not know if we will even have the house that is over the shelf, the, the shelter, the roof that is over our heads. Too many people go home. But these dams did it all well. Because in the five year term, fat went up. Don't let that blow away. That's important because that's going about the man that owned eight million dollars. Be criminal, I got eight dollars in my purse, and I got grandchildren to help myself feed. His allowance was cut, and I cannot help, I have to help him to feed. I'm gonna wrap up in a minute, yes. Next time, don't call me to talk for 10 minutes at all. Can't call. Banks stand firm in the decision to close Paris's account, and Thompson went up with the central bank governor then. To show you nothing is wrong with Clico, we are going to put in 10 million, we want it back. We want it back to put in the pockets of those 400 and those other 2,000 that went home before them and the other 2,000 that they say have to come out. Put those people in a measure that they can be independent and do not be main, bent on and relying on the government. I'm going to close because I come here to talk from pathways to progress to cat roads, to mendicants, because that is where they're pushing us now. And as I close, let me say, ladies and gentlemen, the failed projects is what got me liquor. I see more than 300 houses, rices, don't talk about constant at all, you need to go and let the media go, the media go do investigative journalism. I have it in my camera. More than 100 houses, and the windows and the doors of nearly all of them knock out. Trees are growing up through the foundation. And people talk about Lashley did a fantastic job. Fantastic job, my eye. I went down to Lancaster. And I took pictures of Lancaster 1 and 2, 84 houses together. Not a fella in them and the paint fading by the minute. Some bright orange like that shirt, now they nearly cream. And not a house delivered. And people had money to buy a house. MPW, highway to where that the Barbados Labour Party was giving you flyovers 
well of course less than what the government is doing now between Simpson Motors and Redmond's Village and it still can done not under the and they say good management I don't want to talk about the QEH ambulance now I'm not gonna criticize the plane from Dubai I'm not gonna criticize them I just want you to know that a &E is no better and people are buying medication on the outside because the hospital ain't got it. Bandages have to be carried, signs you got to carry a pillow too for your mother and father. That's what Queen Elizabeth has gone up, hospital has gone under. And I ain't talking a whole lot of hogwash. Finally, I feel that we went well. We, meaning the Democratic Labour Party as a government, we the Belgians. Ready $600,000 first, and then it must be a, a, a million dollars for that Alexandra investigation that the same civil service ministry and so public administration had to come and deal with it. Money day. 28 days of summer camps multiplied by $6 million for six years. Six sixes is $36 million. Those people should be working today, put back the money. Constituency Council says they must have had about four million by now. One David Thompson Memorial Football. Mia went outside Honorable Mia Motley sought sponsorship for her football match. Why could they not do it? And in all of this, you we have got to pay more fees now. People dropping out, mother, father, and son studying. All three say they know where we can get fifteen thousand dollars after September each term to be able to pay for our education, but they took up all of that money. Ronald Jones built 72 guard huts. Each primary school in Barbados has one. Go up at Holy Innocence, go down at Sharon, go at the other schools and you will see some of the keys cannot be found. They were never used yet. I said that there's another million dollars that could have helped you, the poor people. Could have helped me to put something in my pocket that I can give the poor people when I see them too. That has not happened. There are no paying rural development commissions rent from Omni Center in St. Peter. $7,000 a month to $42,000 for rural's commission up in Bridge Street in St. Michael. Do you know how much more money that is? Take away 7442. Same thing with rural urban. Same thing with the youth affairs that was functioning under the Ministry of Education's cover. All it had to do was pay utilities for 14 years. And that minister, Lil Caesar, has moved that department up to Sky Mall. Thousands of dollars when the month comes. It has to stop. This government ain't by a new single transport board bus. Now that one had the accident in St. Lucie week before, and this other one now with the accident there, and every time you pass, I got the pictures in my camera, a bus break down, bus break down. You, the poor people of Barbados, can hardly travel now because they're gonna wait and wait and wait, and the bus is not going to come because the transport board is failing. And by the way, here they're sending home 50 something people this week too. And it hurts me to hear that. I am sorry, because those are poor people who deserve to work, the drivers, the cleaners, the security. But we will wait and see and hope for the best. Because Fondel now has passed the blame on to the civil servants. The way that the people were treated is not how it should have been. He is the leader of a cabinet, but he is muted. He is a muted prime minister whom Christopher Stinkler, Stinkler, excuse me, called him the right honorable. Who made Frondel the right honorable? It hurts my heart to see that those people sit in cabinet. I want them to follow what happened in Bermuda. On the 10th of December, the cabinet, the prime minister of Bermuda, said to the people there, we are conscious of what is happening in our country. You must read the newspaper now and don't only look for Lake Mokulu and put in the south so who live with who and who any brambles. Read this. And the minister said, they have made the decision. They had it under consideration for many months. And as premier, it is my responsibility to lead by example. I wonder from they read that. Make some tough decisions from the top. He didn't start at the bottom. 
He dare, today I will announce the decision that will produce a leaner, more effective and efficient cabinet. The changes reflect recommendations. He has cut his cabinet from 10, from 13, excuse me, to 10 ministers. Fandel, you can cut yours from 17 to 12. Take out Irene. Take out Sekayu. Take out Todd. Take out Jepter. Take out Darcy. Who? No, I can't tell you. Take out Stuart. Yeah, the Eagle 11 and David Stuart. But there are five or six in there he can take out. And the cabinet of Barbados will be better run. But there's too much largesse in there. Too many people in there to get a salary. And they're saying, we will cut our salary by this and that. When they cut their salary by that, but they cut your whole wages or your whole salary, what will you do? The Barbados Labour Party is the party that came to you in 1994 and said 22 or more percentage unemployment was in this place. And Owen Asa and the team for Barbados Labour Party said, we will say and we will prove to you job number one is job and so said so then when we demitted office in january 2008 unemployment was down to 6.7 percent the best in the history of barbados mayor motley owen arthur kerry simmons dale marshall maria airguard eddie hinkson and all the team for the Barbados Labour Part, Party, the team for the times, will again give you prosperity in Barbados. But you have to work with us. We will not support any foolish talk because rubbing sore shoulders rolled Ronald Jones. We will not support any nonsense about any cracking heads and shooting down anybody. Peaceful marches and demonstrations. Peaceful, Mandela did it. Martin Luther King do it. Mayor Motley and the Barbados Labour Party can do it to change the lives of the people of Barbados. And so ladies and gentlemen, comrades all, let us hold the face. And I close with a statement I heard, it's not mine, but words to the effect, it was on the BBC, where one world leader who has been meeting a lot of challenges said to the people, Trust is a very important thing. And once you lose confidence in people, it takes you long, long, long to build back that confidence. And that person said, trust can be lost in days and weeks, but it takes years and decades to build it back. Trust in the Barbados Labour Party because the confidence that you put in the Democratic Labour Party has now been bastardized. Go forward in faith. Do what you have to do with decency and do it in order like the Barbados Labour Party always does it. And I am confident that you, the people of Barbados, will get better governance. You will see more equity. You will see the accountability that you can question. You will see growth in this economy and you will see improvements in every sphere of life because all of you and you and you are proud Barbadians who have built this country and you will reap the benefits of a Barbados Labour Party under the leadership of Mia Motley, Owen Arthur and the team going forward in your interests and the interests of those visitors among us. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. Have a good evening.